Hello beautiful people, welcome to my vlog where I talk about my life and everything that's in it. I did do a video last week, um, for reasons I will explain going forward, but I thought I was going to do one today, so here we are. I've been stress picking my face and actually my whole body, so we'll also get into that. Um, yeah, so today I wanted to talk about, not necessarily my week, because... I can't really remember most of it, but more like the effects of PTSD, CPST, whatever you want to label it as, um, on me and how it impacts my life as it has done in the last couple of weeks. Um, and like people like therapists, psychologists, whatever would call what I'm going through at the moment as like an episode or a flare up or a trigger or whatever. Um, but really, I'm just, I don't like to look at it that way. If you read The Body, The Body Keeps the Score, um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, but he doesn't believe in like labels in the same sense. He believes more, sorry, that's my dog snoring. He believes more in the concept of symptoms of childhood trauma manifesting later in adult life. And then we give them labels and we put them in boxes because it gives everybody else a bit more control and sometimes it makes us feel more in control like my like being told i have adhd makes me feel more in control because i don't feel as like as bad about it as i could do i guess um and like I, effectively being diagnosed with CP, cptsd as well like i don't feel quite as insane as i feel like i am sometimes um and I, it makes me feel like and like knowing what i know about my trauma knowing what i know about the way it impacts brain development has really impacted the way I feel about myself and that I don't, I sometimes have a little bit more grace of myself as a result. A lot of the time I don't, um, but sometimes I do. So like labels are good and bad depending on the type of person that you are and what you need, I guess. So yeah, basically like, I'm not really sure what happened or how it got triggered. I think I've been massively stressed, which is obviously a big impact um if you've watched my other videos i'm like doing some really big life transitions at the moment which are like exciting but i can't really see it like that right now because it just feels like there's so much to do and it's so stressful um and i keep being like oh as soon as this happens it'll feel easier as soon as this happens like as soon as i get my first booking i feel like uh, i got my first booking this morning for my airbnb that i'm starting next month um and like I, I don't feel that much different but at the same time I'm like it's okay this is a a dent in the bills basically like that's that's a good thing um so yeah it's like, and I keep chasing like well as soon as I can make a decision on this and as soon as I've I've got a lot of big life decisions to make about like where we're gonna live and um what I'm gonna do going forward and I think it's just been really overwhelming on top of that I had a quite a probably triggering therapy session um a couple of weeks ago so I'm trying to think of what could have triggered this episode for me um I had quite a triggering therapy session a couple of weeks ago which I disassociated during the session she picked up on that and I wasn't expecting it was something that I wasn't expecting to bother me as much as it did and it was almost like opening Pandora's box in that sense like as soon as we then started talking about it I was like oh 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 so that might have something to do with it also uh I was watching The Handmaid's Tale at the time which is very massively triggering for me for lots of reasons but I was also like un believably hooked on it couldn't stop watching it watched a whole five series in a week um so like there's lots of different reasons this could have happened this time around it's not the first time I've experienced something like this where I do what I do I'm about to explain to you um but it, I didn't I would be I'll be honest with you I wasn't expecting to lose it quite so much like this um at this age and with this level of healing that I've done, this level of healing work I've done. So like what happens for me is that my body goes into fight or flight, well it's actually fight, flight, freeze, fawn and there's another one. Um, I think it's like please, it's like people please, like 
That's the same as fawning. I don't know. I remember it at some point. Um, or is it su submit? That's it. Fight, flight, freeze, fawn, submit. It's like the newer way of say addressing it. Um, and my body, it's not just your mind that does it. Like your whole body goes into it. Like all my muscles are super tense. Um, I'm like rigid at night. I can't sleep very well. Um, I don't feel safe eating. I don't feel safe exercising. I don't feel safe sitting and doing breath work or having physical contact with anybody. Um, and like, there's not been a major event to trigger this. This is why it's called CPTSD because it's a chronic problem that you keep getting this fight or flight system is triggered. It's activated um, almost like it, well, there's a word unnecessarily I guess in in terms of the real world like there's not been a big instant that's in, like it needed me to do this earlier in the year there was and I did that's that whole thing happened again but that was very much necessary and that I completely understood why that happened for me there hasn't been an instant this time around um which is why I think I'm a bit confused and I'm a bit unsure of when it's going to go away I think the last time this happened it probably was about three weeks so got another week to go um but yeah so for me like the muscle thing disassociation so this is where like and depersonalization derealization so I can't remember waking up I can't remember important personal details um I have to everything has to be in a calendar everything has to be in notes and everything has to be written down of what I'm supposed to be doing each day um one episode of dissociation I had like probably like four years ago now I couldn't remember how to make a cup of tea or where food was kept like in a fridge or anything like that like it, it can be really extreme it depends on where it takes you back to in your like what personality effectively it takes you back to I have something called disassociative identity disorder so often when I'm deep um when I'm disassociating it will take me to a different personality which like I've needed during my trauma experiences to survive because I've had chronic trauma there's been different personalities that have evolved in different periods of my life that have served me in different ways um for example like one trauma might need um me to overly people please one trauma might mean you to run away all the time that kind of thing so that's the I jumped to different personalities I don't know what personality effectively I'm in at the moment um it's I'm, I just know what my body's doing more than anything um so yeah and then like I don't like nothing feels real every like I genuinely a lot a lot of the time think I'm in a coma and I'm gonna wake up in a minute in a hospital room like nothing here is real this is all made up um and that's just that that's just how like depersonalization derealization works um just making you feel like it's not like everything isn't isn't real thing it almost feels too bad to be real um obviously there's nothing going on but my my body right now is triggered to think everything around me is terrible and I need to like I need to leave this world in order to feel safe um which is really sad but that is the reality of chronic trauma and particularly childhood trauma um and I think that's what I really wanted to talk about today is I think I've recognized during this episode um how much my trauma has affected the way that I function in the world like I was very aware of it before um but I guess not in the way that like it every time I change job is because I'm panicking every time I change location is because I'm panicking it's not they're not made through sensible rational decisions I, with the exception of my yoga teacher training and my meditation training um and that that wasn't done through panic that was done through like I did actually really enjoy that and I thought it was really beneficial for me to do that um but I didn't end up sticking with that for various reasons to do with health and my mental state and everything but um yeah I think like generally what I'm saying is that a lot of the decisions I make in my life are to appease my trauma and appease my body's reactions to it so like my fight or flight at the moment like the all I want to do is run away just get on a plane somewhere and just vanish it's all I want to do um 
and it's really hard to refuse myself that when like I've convinced myself that will fix everything I'll be absolutely fine if I just fly to Sri Lanka or Bali or India or whatever and just vanish um obviously that's not the case like I'm I'm aware of that my intellectualism is aware of that um but it's not like and people who have seen me in this state recently even like you've got you've got all this and you've got this and you've got this and I do have a fantastic life on paper um and lots of great opportunities on paper and lots of skills and knowledge and ways I can expand myself ways I can build myself and share myself with the world um on paper but we aren't just working with on paper and this is where there's like a big divide between trying to help me and actually knowing how to help me um in that right now I don't need therapy I don't need but this and here's the reason and um you need to rationalize yourself I, none of that is going to work right now somatics aka working with the body to re to reset my nervous system and relax that somatics and um nurturing um childhood like reversion sort of thing like watching i watched elemental last yesterday um like kids tv programs and things that would have made me feel safe as a child in case that's where my i've gone back to right now um are all like things that i really ought to be focusing on unfortunately a lot of the time i don't have the energy to be able to do that and i sort of almost need somebody else to help me do that but because nobody knows how to deal with it unless you've really been through it um it's massively challenging to expect that from anybody and i don't i don't expect that from anybody i'm not waiting for anyone to rescue me i'm just i'm all i'm doing is focusing desperately on surviving desperately um because like underneath it all this need to run away this need to not want to be here anymore underneath it all survival will always be like the not always but most of the time will be the driving factor is that I want myself to survive um and I will try and think of ways to do that even if it means changing things and ma managing my life around my trauma um and so that I I feel like I can survive basically and I think I've realised how much of a chronic pattern this is, how much this is, ow, ow, I had like a bit of dry skin on my finger, um, how much of a chronic pattern this is and how much this has like dictated my life. Um, and it's made me sad. And like, there was this quote the other day that was like, you, healing is like mourning the person that you could have been without your trauma. Um, and it's like, for me, that's, this I regret so much and a lot of people are like oh you don't regret anything like let you only live once and all this shit shut up I regret a lot so let me regret let me figure out that myself um because I'd, I'd absolutely eat myself up for all the opportunities missed and all the ways my life could have been different and had I known then that my trauma would be affecting me now had I known the adult traumas that I would go through that would make it more hard for me to function now, then I would have made different decisions. But I didn't know then. So no, it's not fair to punish myself for decisions I made before I knew better. Um, but I still do. And you just got to let me work through that. Um, so, yeah. That's like the long and short of it, really. Um, I... I don't, I don't know, like, I, I think maybe this is something that I experience forever, um, when certain things trigger me, like, my dream would be to build a life where I don't get in situations like this very often at all, um, where I can build a life that revolves around healing, healing myself, healing others, being with nature, having like less time pressures, not needing to be places all the time. Um, I think like for me that that's more realistic in terms of helping myself feel um, safer and be able to live a life that doesn't feel quite so frightening so much of the time. Um, 
there's to get to that place there's like money and work and time involved that I feel like I've been trying to do for a really long time um and like it could be that my Airbnb opens that opportunity for me um we'll see I've got one one night's book so far let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves here um so yeah I don't know there's there's a lot I think I wanted to share it with you in terms of like I'm so super aware that I don't function the way that I'm supposed to at my age I'm so super aware that I am not I don't regulate myself in the same way that other people can um and like I have done so much work in therapy I've done so much work on my own to get myself into a place where it's easier for me to live in the real world um but sometimes like that just isn't possible like at the moment it's just not possible for me to enjoy myself or have an easy experience um because it just feels so intense so that's like yeah it's 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 really difficult and without people and like i i did an instagram story about it yesterday um please follow me there as well as here i'll love you forever thank you um about it and i was like i feel like when i talk about trauma in this way people will be thinking oh get over it you know move the fuck on um and hell i'd, I'd absolutely love to like i don't feel like i'm i really apart from this last couple of weeks where i've had like really horrendous PTSD flashback nightmares in the middle of the night, sweating, screaming, waking up, stuff. Um, apart from that, like, I would, I don't really, like, think about it like that. It's more that, it's not that, that it's the trauma that I keep coming back to. It's the fact that my body can't regulate or feel safe that's the problem. Um, not that I'm dwelling on things from the past. Because I'm really not, like that's what I've had therapy for you know um and that's what it's good for so mm. and like I think it's not my place to really think about what other people think about me saying about my own trauma like that's not it's not fair or right at all um and like no one will ever have any idea what I've experienced even if I talk about it even if I told people um, which, you know, I'm sure I will talk about it. or will have talked about it. Um, but it, no one will ever really know what that experience was like for me. So therefore, no one can really have a say on it. Um, so that's that. For those of you who are here for my updates on life. Um, like I said, I can't really remember most of this week. It's exciting that I've got one booking on Airbnb. Yay. Um, I can't really well I, I can if I want to drop the price more but I have dropped the price for the first month and um I just want to fill up really and not feel stressed about getting enough like rent effectively in um so I'm trying to stay hopeful about that and I'm going to start packing up here this week because a lot of the stuff here is going to go there in the loft and in our storage spaces there so that I can live a little lighter here and get used to living lighter. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I've enjoyed cutting wood. I'm sure I've told you this before, but it's coming to that season now. So I spent last night just cutting loads of wood and it's just a fantastic distraction for me. Um, I've played a bit of Sims this weekend, which has also been a good distraction. Um, I think I honestly think at the moment I just almost need to press fast forward until I can calm my body down. So I'm just trying to find ways to do that really at the moment. So yeah, thank you for being here and thank you for watching this. And if you're somebody who has experienced PTSD, CPTSD or any form of trauma, I'm so fucking sorry. And it's just impossible. It feels impossible sometimes, um, but it will pass. I know this phase will pass and I know that we'll get up and we'll carry on and that we will make changes for in other people's lives because of what we've experienced we'll be able to help them and I recognize that and I hope that you can too I love you lots